chain assemblies, a chain. And so in this case, we've got, we've got a link chain like for a bicycle. We've got a, a track. It's a, it's, a, it's a chain also. And you'll recognize these as assemblies. They're just regular assemblies. And as with most of the things that I end up doing, I start with kind of a, a layout of some kind. If you've got the advanced assembly extension, you'll be able to utilize the skeleton functionality in ProEngineer. And I've done so here. But if you don't have the advanced assembly extension, you can simply do that with a part that you call a layout. You'll lose a little bit of functionality, but it's essentially the same sort of thing. What I'm starting with here is just a couple of planes and an external copy job that indicates where some, some hard points are. So rather than sketching the hard points in, in this exercise, let's say we know where the hard points are for the basic geometry that we're going to start with. And so I'm going to pick a plane, go to my sketch button, and go to my sketch view. I'm going to turn off the planes now, and then using references, I'm going to add a few references, picking up those points, just so that I have something that I could use direct. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sketch in what might be the front sprocket, sketch in what might be the back sprocket. And in this case, we're going to put in a, a third kind of a tensioner sprocket. Let's say two inches over there. We'll make this one oh, about, oh, about that big, something like that. OK, so sketch quickly, sketch a curve that represents a couple of the, the things that are less movable. Now, in the case of a bicycle chain, we've got the sprockets, and in this case, a tensioner or a, uh, an idler, and then the derailleur. Now, the derailleur is the thing that, that we have such difficulty controlling. You could set up a derailleur. Well, let's do it. Let me show you this. I'm going to make another curve, and I'll sketch that on the same plane, using as a reference what? That same known point. This is the known point where the derailleur gets attached to. And then I guess uh, we'll, we'll use these as references as well. So let's set up what might be the derailleur. So it's got a leg, it's got another leg. You notice that it snapped to horizontal. I don't want that, so we'll, uh, I'll remove the horizontal. And I'll add some dimensions. What do I know about my derailleur? This leg is going to be some value. This leg is going to be some other value. That's, uh, I don't know. We'll change up those values later. At those two endpoints, there's going to be a couple of a couple of sprockets or pulleys, I guess. We'll let the radiuses be equal on these two. Let's make those, uh, I don't know, one and three quarters or something like that. So what do I have so far? I've got two lengths and a diameter that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lock because I don't want them to change as I drag the rest of this around. And so this is essentially the motion of my derailleur. But where is it? How do I know where it needs to go? How does it move? Well, currently I've got two angle dimensions. Is that how I want to drive the position of a derailleur? Well, who can tell me what the natural position of the derailleur is going to be? Well, it's a function of many things, isn't it? It's a function of what? The length of the chain and the size of the sprockets. Well, how do I set up that relation? And that's where we're going with this next.